<coughs> good afternoon to everybody good afternoon sir good afternoon sir good afternoon sir good afternoon so we will start block 6 of mg 14 this is indian poetry it's very interesting but uh, we uh, may not have enough time to go the text because poetry is something that if you do not understand the text if you do not go by each and every line and expression of the text the real charm of poetry is uh, not enjoyed actually <clears throat> so uh, we have many poems in every unit you have three four poems at least two three four poems uh um, that is why it is not possible that we can go with all the poems and uh, more interesting um thing uh, about this is uh, poems of different languages of different cultures being translated you will find uh, kashi manipuri uh, punjabi urdu kashmiri telugu odia bengali all these cultures literatures together in this chapter in this unit uh, in this block you can say indian poetry <clears throat> it is very uh, important so those who have uh, the text you go through the text uh, poems are very short poems it's not very longer like novels you can go with the uh, text easily you can complete the text and understand it will be better so the actual feelings of the poet the actual intention of the poet the poet's temperament only can be understood if you go through the text so that is why i suggest that those who have the text who got the text you go through the text so now what we will do we will focus one poem from each unit okay i don't know how how many units will cover i'll focus one poem of each unit and try to cover there are six units in this block and uh, many poems so it's not possible uh, still we'll try our best uh, to start with requiem in the first poem in the first unit we'll have this poem in khashi language that is requiem okay and this is a, a very important poem all the poems are uh, important uh, according to indian culture indian tradition all regional cultures that exist in india so this is a very interesting poem uh, talking about death okay so later <clears throat> we'll discuss we'll come to the poem and the thematic part of the poem but now coming to the author okay and this is k s nankin rich okay the name of the poet is like this k s nankin rich uh, uh he is a, a, a very good poet we are not going to discuss the poet much because again it will take time and so only one poem can be completed if we go by this way talking about the poet uh, the background of the poem or the cultural socio political context of the poem this is the actual process by which we can uh, understand the text the poetic thought the poetic temperament the context of literature and the social message or the moral message Uh, what whatever is the intention of the poet everything can be understood if we go like this so <clears throat> here in one hour you have six chapters and you have um, more than uh, 15 poems you can say uh, so it's really difficult if you think of complete completing all the things um, uh, in this way uh, the, according to uh, the process actual process of reading a poem it's not very easy anyhow we'll start with the poem requiem uh, it is also 
uh, a very important poem by uh, Lunkin Ridge. <clears throat> Unit 1 particularly attempts to acquaint you with the background of North East Indian poet. All the northern east part of India, so you find Assamese, Manipuri, uh, Kakvorok, Tripura, Khasi, all these languages you will find have been included in Unit 1. So Unit 1 uh, tries to acquaint you with the background, literary background of this particular part of India. These regions are less known due to the geographical location first and socio-political conditions also. These are the two reasons why they are uh, not uh, as much in the mainstream of country of the uh, of our country as we uh, the other parts of the country. So that, that is why their literature is also less uh, explored by other parts of India. We, those who live in those uh, Western India, the Southern Indians, or we can say, we have, we do not have uh, that much knowledge about uh, the greatest poets, greatest writers, authors of those areas. That is why uh, in this particular uh, block, you have given a chance to go through those cultures, know about certain poets, those are very important, have great contribution to overall Indian literature. And that is why this is uh, given. It's very interesting, you must, you are reading always your own literature, your regional literature, along with British, American, Australian, uh, <clears throat> German, French, we used to read all these kind of literature prescribed in our syllabus, but our own regional literatures that exist in India, we have a great number of cultures, a great number of languages, and every language has their own uh, literary tradition. So that is when necessary, it's necessary, we must enjoy. Okay, so we find the coexistence of paradoxical world, paradoxical worlds uh, in these areas, particularly uh, the paradoxical worlds like the folk and the westernized okay, people uh, of in uh, particularly in uh, eastern northeast areas, you find paradoxical worlds existing together. Paradoxical means opposite to each other. When we say paradox, we find two contradictory elements, words, expressions being juxtaposed side by side. That is, we say uh, uh, paradoxical. Okay, so here, <clears throat> we find in uh, particularly these areas, uh, two contradictory words exist together, like the folk kind of um, people, those who like uh, folks and uh, folk literature, folk um, um, uh, culture, you can say. But at the same time, you will also find <coughs> people here, those who are very much interested in a westernized concept. Okay, That is why uh, this is paradoxical. You can say, you will find a virgin forest, full of forest, along with car choked streets so there also you find virgin forest along with the streets full of uh, packed full of cars okay, so that is why uh, this is paradoxical you will find ancestral ancestral values uh, together existing coexisting with the insurgencies uh, the revolutions kind of things in those areas so that is why values are there as well as the revolution the insurgencies. Uh, that is why it is necessary that you must uh, understand the, the literary tradition, the political, socio-political situation at that time, at this time, at this moment, and at that moment also when literature was being produced. In such circumstances, the society becomes 
the society becomes uh, the society becomes very important the society is reflected and becomes a kind of witness a kind of mute witness to the uh, corruption and to the uh, terror of the society that there will be corruption there will be terror existing in the world so society is only what into uh, the poem we'll <clears throat> discuss about the poem requiem requiem is a poem by case nangi 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 rich he talks about uh, mary a woman uh, mary who is uh, dead now so we know that in our our culture it is very not in our culture it's not confined to our culture we find this is a tradition in most of uh, the human culture we find that when somebody is dead uh, that people around us our relatives our friends our neighbors they come and gather together uh, there will be a mourning session people will start mourning over you uh, they will give <clears throat> a lot of suggestions a lot of point of views uh, regarding the death uh, regarding uh, consolation uh, regarding condolence so when somebody is dead these things are very common we find everywhere here also we find that uh, mary is dead uh, remembering mary and this is a requiem requiem is a, a dirge so if you try to understand the meaning of requiem it is a religious ceremony performed for the dead generally and this is a dirge and can be a piece of music used for uh, this uh, religious ceremony performed for the uh, for the dead man or if a, if a person is dead we uh, the kind of ceremony is that we we have to um, complete so that is requiem you can say and it is also a dirge okay so when dirge comes you can also think of elegy so elegy and dirge there to different things so elegy is a, a very um, a poem of serious reflection particularly it is also a mourning poem we generally mourn over the death of a person and uh, is a poem of serious reflection typical lamentation for the dead it's elegy and uh, on the other hand a dirge is also a song particularly a somber song it's not a literary genre it is a song or lamentation also we express uh, our grief uh, our mourning for a dead <clears throat> during particularly dirge uh, can be performed in the um, uh, cremation ground on the cremation ground at the time of funeral it can be performed so this is the difference between a dirge and a <clears throat> an elegy so now coming back we'll find the requiem was uh, requiem is a is a, a dirge okay the poet takes us to uh, the social world <clears throat> of a close community so we find by this poem we are dragged to uh, a community a close community where people are connected related to each other so today we find that there may be differences in the urban areas in uh, city areas people have no such belongingness to each other if somebody is dead um, the body is uh, uh, taken into the cremation ground or anywhere by uh, the relatives and others very few are um, supposed to be present there and we find that most of uh, the dead bodies Uh, sometimes during this corona also you you found that uh, these kind of requiems are very you know, far away things we cannot even uh, the relatives cannot have a look at the dead body so situations are like this but in the past in the ancient past if you look at each and every culture of india we find that if a person is dead that uh, we we expect uh, that uh, many people of the village of the rural area of uh, different uh, relatives uh, residing far away from our house they all will come and there will be uh, a huge gathering okay 
so that gathering is the social world the poet is talking about and so we'll uh, see which has uh, gathered together after the death of mary a woman uh written uh, this diary is written on uh, mary i said so we'll find that people being uh, commenting people uh, giving their own points of view related to how this lady died and uh, many things so if you go through the text you can understand so there will uh, you will find a refrain refrain in every part there are a, broadly you can find two parts of the poem first part and second part and you will find a refrain i heard them <clears throat> okay this is the refrain uh, means i heard the people saying so them here means the gathering those who can be um, uh, divided into different parts with different points of view they have their own points of view adds to the general sadness climaxing into the question what was wrong with mary so this is a question many of them they have their own questions and that that is ultimately you can say the climax at the point uh, what <clears throat> what actually happened to mary mary died uh, it's very ironical also if, if you try to understand this is ironical because what happened to uh, uh, mary so when uh, this line is asked <clears throat> uh, the writer says the poet says this is ironical because um, uh, what could be uh, right or wrong to a dead body so the question generally asked or uh, culminated or you can say climaxed with what was uh, wrong with mary <clears throat> okay this was the question that that most of the uh, people in that gathering they were asking so this is ironical the poet says because here we find <clears throat> and the poignancy reflects both a general and specific condition okay it is uh, ironical uh, because what could be wrong to a dead body so there there cannot be anything wrong even not not even right to the dead but that dead body is good for nothing is of no use uh, a good or bad that we uh, right or wrong that we think may happen to somebody when somebody is alive when somebody is already dead so we cannot say uh, what happened to this uh, something wrong happened to this something right happened to the body so the body has no response or if uh, right wrong whatever is done right now has no meaning at all so that is why uh, he said this is ironical many many of the people they went on asking such kind of questions have their own point of view of why mary day died and what kind of situations are uh, complete compelled mary to die or uh, <clears throat> another point also you'll find that uh, the doctor did not come uh, there is a line also she died because the doctor uh, could not come the doctor did not come or the doctor did not arrive so it may be also ironical either the doctor was um, not called Um, by uh, the family they did not call the doctor okay no doctor came this is an irony it's maybe negligence of the family or maybe the family uh, situation uh, like poverty and um, poor condition of the family maybe the reason why doctor did not come but anyhow that doctor's arrival at that time point of time could have some meaning but now when the patient is already dead mary is al already lying dead this question does not carry any meaning but you will find people of uh, the, the gathering the social gathering after somebody died they have a lot of such questions which ge which generally means nothing okay you will find people <clears throat> talking about something absurd also you will you the person who are responsible to complete all the activities related to the funeral and other things he will be in stress he will be in problem when we say that the family was um, means financially very poor so this kind of things taking care of the all the guests and people coming uh, for mourning uh, against um, mourning over the death of this lady this is a very 
a painful experience for them they, first of all they have lost somebody and now they have to take they have to bear all the cost uh, that that will be uh, that will be as a result of the expenditure made on uh, the treatment and entertainment of this uh, social gathering the people in this gathering so they will not never care about it the people they will go on talking on certain about absurd things which are ironical but this is our culture we find a, i we find it a, <clears throat> as a cultural trait okay so as mary was dying no doctor came i said mary's death was not ordinary it was not ordinary there is a line hold her off to the universe uh, to the invisible layer okay mm, there is a line in the poem death messengers coming and taking mary uh, to an invisible layer so that is something written in in poetic language so death messenger coming and taking her to a different layer to a very uh, invisible layer is associated with cultural belief that when somebody is about to die particularly in our hindu religion we we believe that the um, yama the the god of death we consider in our religion uh, yama sends her um, means you can say um, people to take the soul away we believe that in different movies must you must have seen also that yama yama's people come and they, when uh, the people come the yama dut we say when the yama dut comes to the dying pe- person the person the dying person can see them you cannot see this is a concept also cultural trait uh, that other religion may not have i don't know but in our religion hindu religion we believe that when somebody is dying or on the death bed on the verge of death he or she can see the yama dut sent by the lord the death of um, the god of death lord yama so that is here very much highlighted the the author said the poet said that this death was not ordinary this is a very um, very important death with cultural belief in the um, the setting in the connection with the death and the heaven we consider this is our earth and if we die we will go to the heaven there the yama will um, consider our uh, deeds whether <clears throat> we have a lot of virtues or a lot of sins according to our uh, virtues and uh, calculation there will be calculation chitra gupta is there after the calculation you will be sentenced uh, to kind of punishment or reward that that will be decided after that. this is something uh, a cultural uh, fact we we understand all though it, it it may not have meaning in scientific um, experiments but still in religion we believe that the intensity of emotion is heightened by the personification of death the emotions expressed by the people gathered the people those who have gathered they have their own emotions okay and the outburst of the emotion you can say became heightened or is heightened by the death death has done that death has did done this so we uh, make death a person as if death has done a lot of things so that is why the author says that death has been personified ha- having uh, the capability of doing a lot of things like human beings the second part of the poem describes the funeral situations <clears throat> okay the pre funeral you can say the pre funeral situations with dead body you know, being bathed scented dressed in her favorite clothes okay so whatever before the dead body was is burnt usually when you <clears throat> take care of this so before you uh, start the funeral the pre funeral part you can say when the dead body is supposed to be bathed and uh, in some cultures we have to Uh, <clears throat> put turmeric uh, um, you can say <clears throat> use turmeric to um, bath the dead body in some culture in 
milk so you will find different cultures using different things to bath so bathing spraying the perfumes you can say and then dressing in the favorite clothes all these things are uh, confined to the pre funeral situations <clears throat> the relatives friends and visitors those who have come uh, to that particular ceremony they they <clears throat> they were entertained they are uh, they are supposed to be entertained so this entertainment is very uh, you can say very ironical also ironically you can understand uh, today also we find something very ironical in village areas uh, i experienced that people <clears throat> they demand wine they they demand alcohol in order to um, <clears throat> take the dead body into the cremation ground so this has become the reality so they are also we find it's not very far away from our culture our generation we find that people those who come to the gathering they need to be entertained entertained in the sense you have to uh, arrange a feast for them tea biscuits uh, <clears throat> they they will mourn for the dead body and you have to arrange for uh, them all these things so this is a kind of cultural tradition also Uh, very absurd very ironic very paradoxical you can say so when somebody is dead you are means broken hearted at that time you do not have patience how to sustain how to survive in the absence of that particular person it's not about a old lady if a young man uh, the the pillar of the family is dead so how can you think of all the other bereaved family members will take care of uh, all this gathering and take care they will Mm, they they are well entertained so this is very ironical the <clears throat> uh, they accept the death with a stoic nature stoic means with who is indifferent to both pain and pleasure we say a stoic they accept it as a uh, as a stoic uh, with a stoic nature the last two line so went so peacefully is very uh, contradictory you can say say went so peaceful so when somebody dies has to die like that somebody when somebody is dying uh, see or he cannot make a noise like uh, a very huge noise that uh, you will be you will get the information that he or she is dead <clears throat> so that is the uh, line which says the contrast between her natural death and painful suffering so she has suffered a lot throughout her life I means uh, Uh, bedridden she suffered a lot and now at last she is dead and people are talking about that she suffered a lot she was a very uh, good hearted kind hearted lady and she uh, died very peacefully oh. she died very uh, with a lot of contentment so people of the gathering they are saying so much according to their own point of view whoever may have uh, seen or experienced uh, uh, the company of this particular lady the title <clears throat> um, poem of the poem transforms ordinary into extraordinary so this is a tradition this is a um, uh, you can say feature of romantic poetry in uh, european culture you also find here for so this scene is very ordinary okay we find this particular scene of somebody being dead and the uh, social gathering coming and after uh, the body is burned or um, buried so we return and uh, this is the ceremony it's very common ceremony because death is very common every time every moment we we find people dying so every moment ceremonies are being organized and uh, being uh, you can say experience so this is very common but the writer has made it so extraordinary you can say so uncommon this is the uh, this is the sense of you can say romanticism this is the feature of romanticism as you find a solitary reaper becomes a very important poem by wordsworth like daffodils you must have read the poem daffodils it is a simple flower like marigold and the poem becomes so uh, so engrossing so enjoyable at the end we understand that uh, the the writer um, wordsworth has made it <coughs> very extraordinary so when ordinary is turned into extraordinary common is made on common we say this is uh, romanticism 
so this is also an example of that okay uh, we find here the natural with the universal here you will find the natural with the universal a typical social situation has been created in which people they have gathered to mourn over a death and they have uh, made such kind of comments they have such kind of uh, view points or points of view you can say it presents multiple view points i said that is uh, marriage uh, the mourners okay uh, uh, you you can find the poem representing or the poem represents a lot of view points the view points may be of marriage marriage point of view you can also find from the poem you can find the points of view of the mourners those the, the people who those who have come to mourn their own point of view on mary how she died and what so where she will go what situation killed her and what situation and how she died she died very peacefully many things such things that they, they, their point of view Uh, that is important and the speaker's point of view one who is narrating all these things who is describing these things you will find the speaker's own point point of view also here present uh, who present uh, the death in a very multifarious form with dramatic effect so you'll find very effectively very dramatically the narrator the poet has presented death a very common incident that that is found in our culture uh, in a very uh, in in a very different way in a very extraordinary way so this is uh, the first poem that we talked about <clears throat> the requiem so now come to the next poem that is uh, tree and the sage okay harvajan singh uh, a punjab uh, punjabi writer harvajan singh okay the tree and the sage it is translated by jess rahi and rita choudhry so coming to this we'll uh, discuss this is also a very good poem by <coughs> harbhajan singh a punjabi uh, you'll find punjabi. there is nothing uh, very specific to punjabi literature in this poem but still you will find the indian uh, concept indian spiritual concept here so we know that uh, tree is a very important very uh, very significant image or you can say the symbol um, of indian spirituality tree has a lot of connections we will discuss all these things how tree is very <clears throat> important so um, about the author is born in uh, uh, born in assam okay and uh, so he was a school teacher um, studied m a in hindi from delhi university also m a in english in 1951 so he was a lecturer in hindi okay died in 2002 born in 1920 and died in 2002 so you, you should not go for that okay he was uh, active in writing poetry and literary criticism okay so here we find that mm, first book of poetry he wrote harvajan singh as a uh, lashan in 1956 that is something important you can uh, remember okay so tree is a long narrative but complex poem so this is a long poem actually in hindi uh, the name of the poem was uh, rukte rishi the tree and the sage okay this is the actual you can say in punjabi also this is rukte rishi the tree at uh, the tree and the sage tree you understand the sage means a very <coughs> sacred kind of person uh, rishi or you can say sanyasi in 1992 this book was published this poem was published it is also very important which uh, <clears throat> which helped um, harbhajan singh to receive saraswati samman because of this writing because of this poem it's a long narrative poem mainly um, philosophical also 
it is very philosophical and based on his own experiences okay. according to the experience of arjun singh according to his philosophical ideology uh, he has tried to narrate this poem he has tried to write this poem okay. <clears throat> the structure of the poem is very, very different it's not the same like other punjabi poems it's a very different kind of uh, you can say the structure the narrative treatment is neither traditional okay the narrative treatment is neither traditional okay <clears throat> nor linear the treatment of uh, the narr narration the narrative treatment we say it is neither traditional nor linear throughout autobiographical details bound they do not exist in a concrete way the style is abstract some sense uh, with some signifiers and uh, some symbols also constructing a paradigm we discover layers of uh, the unconscious layers of the unconscious we cannot fully grasp uh, the depth of this point without a philosophical perspective um, and the consciousness this poem creates a post modern text the kind of illusions the kind of uh, fragmentations the kind of uh, narrative techniques that has been used uh, is also uh, you can say this create a post modern kind of text in this way transcended its own previous modern text so if you take modern text into account so that the, that we find in our in our modern uh, age the modern poems the style of modern poem you will find this poem being very different from them that is why it is said that this poem transcends the modern the principles of modern text and hence we call it as post modern post modern text so modernism when we talk about modernism we must have idea about modern text or modern poetry modern drama absurdism came to drama and uh, you, you know in um, prose or in novel writing we find a lot of new features like uh, existentialism we find uh, um, interior monologue okay a lot of things a lot of new trends came into uh, <clears throat> writing and poetry particularly we find uh, most of the modern poems are fragmented by nature both in writing and in uh, the you can say in the meaning in the thematic part also you will find the essence of the poem being fragmented elusive you have to uh, refer to certain different text which means intertextuality so all these new elements we find in modern literature modern poems now here in this poem is called as uh, Uh, you you know post modern text so this kind of things you can also find in this poem so it's a very important poem <clears throat> now coming to the uh, uh, coming to the poem itself in this poem the poet creates the poets talk about three signs okay signs signs means if you talk about linguistic signifier signified and signifier you must have heard about this signs the tree is the first sign is the tree the rook and the second sign is man okay and the third is rishi the rishi the sage hermit the tree becomes the signifier of eternal nature okay the nature being the same I mean the eternality. You can say being eternal. The sage becomes the signifier of truth. The sage, the rishi, becomes a signifier of truth. And man is passing through his existential agonies in search of this truth. Man is in search of this truth. A transcendental existence, you can say. Okay, so you find the tree. 
ओके इटर्नल नेचर सेज द ट्रूथ मैन इन बिटवीन ट्राइंग टू रीच द ट्रूथ ट्राइंग टू अटेन द ट्रूथ सर्च फॉर दिस बिटवीन द रूक एंड द ऋषि बिटवीन द ट्री एंड द सेज we find man receives a sense of his destiny and the relation between nature and cause so we find nature as uh, uh, the signifier um, you can say the tree as the signifier of eternal nature and culture so we find man to uh, to moving around to wandering in between this to nature and culture and the main aim of his uh, journey is to attain the truth so this is uh, briefly we will talk about that the poet imagines himself to be a tree in the very beginning we find in the beginning he uh, says that he is a tree we can <clears throat> the text is here but we uh, we may have difficulty to go through the text uh, because uh, this is a very long text also okay <clears throat> but the first few lines i can uh, uh, read for you okay uh, canto 1 section 1 to 4 i am a tree the text goes like this i am a tree walking about within my house i sleep and awaken to i feel my own fragrance as well fruits also have i borne though oblivious of their names i am illusions has it always been that is a very precious fruit and the illusion is not yet shattered so this is the beginning of the poem uh, there is no time to go through the text uh, the complete text but anyway so if you try to look at the text okay we find that you know, the poet imagines himself is a uh, as a tree he he says he has fragrance he has fruit okay if he is the tree he has he is receptive of its fragrance and fruit he receives uh, the fragrance of the tree means flowers or whatever may be the fragrance can be received the fruits can be realize that the, these are the fruits of the tree if if you consider yourself as a tree you must have your flowers fruits leaves everything so the poet finds the poet says that he has uh, the fruit okay uh, everything when he steps out of his own self he moves like a tree and people sit without inhibition under its shade so children Uh, throw stones he says lovers engrave their names on on the uh, you can say on the upper surface of the uh, trunk you, you you must have the idea how lovers they uh, write down their names okay on on its bark the tree has seen many seasons he said that the tree has seen many seasons so the tree is a symbol pure symbol if you try to understand the tree as a symbol you can understand all these things the writer himself compares him uh, compare him with the tree is all these things the tree has seen many seasons means many generations you can say many cultures many societies the tree has seen the writer says that he is a tree the poet is equally aware that uh what is called kalpa viksha you must have the idea of kalpa viksha a tree uh, who which can fulfill all your all your desires if you beg something to the tree to the kalpa viksha kalpa viksha uh, fulfills for your dream or uh, if you have something desire so we say a desire fulfilling tree kalpa viksha so this the poet says that he is not a kalpa viksha though he compares himself with a tree a common tree but he does not uh, want to name him himself as a uh, kalpa viksha though he has helped fulfill some desires though he has the ability to uh, he has the ability that he had fulfilled the certain desires by uh, certain people in his lifetime he has fulfilled certain desires but still he says that 
he is not a kalpa vriksha he is not a kalpa vriksha the tree and the son rise together the birds bring them the voice of the rishis so when the birds sing when the birds um, uh, usually uh, cheer up in their uh, usual voice the poet says that the the birds they carry the ragas through the ragas through the music the, through the through the melodies that they sing they bring the voices of the rishi to the tree the tree speaks in the voice of flowers and fruit so all are speaking here the trees are speaking the the uh, rishis are also speaking and the birds they are also very crucial uh, in uh, in the medium of uh, delivering the voices of the rishi to the tree so this is again a very <coughs> complex kind of poem if you do not go through the text uh, thoroughly it may be very difficult it's very philosophical highly philosophical so harbhajan singh uh, long journey continues in this next long poem um, also <clears throat> it's a very important text so if you desire is very important you will find uh, desire uh, concept of desire here also uh, is very much uh, <clears throat> you will find in metaphysics psychological religious philosophy okay so desire the poet also has and desire um, the tree the tree has desire the rishis have their own desire you will find everybody having their own desire so that is something very important also you can see <clears throat> so this is uh, in brief about the poem uh, you can say the tree and the sage so now we'll go for the next poem <clears throat> next poem is uh, the moon okay the moon and mother sirius i'll try the moon is uh, by the moon is by dinanath nadim okay a kashmiri you can say uh, a kashmiri poet you can say the moon is joan joan is the original title but later it was translated as uh, the moon so <clears throat> this is very uh, interesting also um, coming down uh, to the text we find that the moon looks dull as a worn out clock material we can say uh, the moon is compared with uh, um, with uh, chopati so the the image of moon is always very romantic we say the theme that we choose in order to compare something with moon we we take something moon as romantic associated with lovers particularly okay with their uh, young or you can say youthful uh, emotions okay desire we connect moon uh with romanticism or romantic emotions but here you will find moon uh, has some other uh, connections that the shape of the moon is round no doubt but surprisingly you will find that nadim compares the moon initially with a chapati it looks like a chapati roti you can say pancake the region is very clear that when people are dying of poverty they do not find a piece of chapati so this comparison is very much significant you can say the reason for this odd simile this simile is very odd you must not have heard of uh, somebody comparing moon with a piece of chapati it's very kind of odd comparison you do not have seen this is a odd which is an odd simile in the moon we find Okay, the stark fact of how the moon would appear to a poor hungry man, a hungry man who is a desire, who has a desire to get a, a piece of chapati from anywhere and can feel the feel his stomach and 
satiate his hunger in such a situation uh, if somebody sees a moon definitely a moon will be seen as a kind of uh, chapati so that is a very realistic analogy you can say uh, a metaphor rising from a very realistic analogy it's very true very real uh, if you talk about the temperament the psychology of a very poor uh, hunger stricken man a hungry man the moon looks dull as a worn out clock of woolen material woven at palm pole okay. okay the shadow on the surface of the moon you can say compared to the scratches on a uh, white breast so somebody they they also compare the moon with uh, as it is round with a breast and the scratches on the on a particular uh, means this is also compared Uh, an image like this it is pale as false silver coin some also compare it with uh, a silver coin contract a uh, contractor pays an ignorant woman laborer so when uh, the laborers those who have habits of counting and those uh, silver coins looking at the silver coins if they do not get the coin or they are very much obsessive of that coin so when they look at the moon they find at the moon to be looking as a silver coin thereby cheating her of the wages of uh, her honest work so when somebody is cheated when you cheat somebody the contractor cheats somebody by not paying a silver coin so you find uh, they um, they visualizing the moon they having a moon as an image of silver coin the heel looks hungrily at the chapati set the moon even the heel to devour it if to devour it after sunset the red fire in the west is put out by the gathering dark cloud but at the same time the forest fairies start the cooking fire of the moonlight on the eastern hills the glow of which the mist rises like steam from the boiling rice the hope of satisfying meal gives solace to the empty stomach of the poet who continuously and hungrily look at the moon in the sky and different thoughts of thoughts in their mind in his mind okay so the 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 image of the moon is very unusual as a chapati dominates this sonnet uh, from the first to the last line okay and this is very important it is also uh, perfect uh, for the unity of the theme and form uh, that we find in this poem one wonder at the originality of the imagination or the imaginative power you can say of the poet by which he transforms a traditional romantic theme into something realistic okay to something uh, marxist ideology this is marxist ideology ideology where your uh, social status is very important then only you can have uh, romantic romance or something like that so the full moon of the universal lover becomes a hypno hypnotic and attractive symbol the satisfying the hunger of the poor workers in the world and the dominant image is not special to kashmiri but common to the skies of different lands over the world over the earth Now, this is not about kashmiri particularly as the poem is about kashmiri with I'm not talking about kashmir only so you can take the example for all the last picture of the hungry poet gazing at the moon uh, repeats the main theme of the poem as introduced in the very first line so this is very important the moon in sort so then uh, another poem I- i'll give a brief account is you know, mother series so that is also again a very important you can say uh, cultural um, uh, phenomena you you find in indian culture indian societies the critical um, uh, sorry the mother series to buy um, uh, kondi podi nirmala k nirmala we say k nir uh, it is a very important poem because uh, there is something uh, the poem is a telugu poem you, you must remember this is a piece from telugu literature okay it's a telugu liter- literature 
the mother is critically ill mother serious means here the mother is um, ill critically ill critical condition of her health is uh, is uh, given in the beginning and intense anguish of the sufferer of the mother is also narrated in the beginning the poet expressed apart from this physical suffering the mental agony of the old lady because of this uh, illness because of this uh, poor lung suffering means powerfully and uh, uh, the the tropes merge into one another to create an electrifying effect the emotion behind the expression makes for ease in creating a new idiom okay so here we find the bedridden mother is quite waiting for the uh, death okay the way the mother is not waiting the other members of the family they are very much interested that when she will die okay, she knows that everybody around has been waiting for her death when uh, she will die everyone has been hopefully except uh, expectant you can say she finds in uh, their solic uh, solicitors in paris sometimes they inquire they ask they in a painful hollowness okay sometimes they doubt whether the lady is dead the lady is not uh, responding the lady is the lady uh, has gone uh, uh, silent for a long time perhaps she is dead so this is something right behind that inquisitiveness uh, is they are looking forward for that a relief from this long wait for a day a relief a relax when she will die a burden will be removed from their head that that is something they have in their mind she does not say this right but uses the powerful device of suggestion then uh, you'll find uh, sometimes the writer's finger also pressing on her back she cannot escape finding a kind of compulsion she tells him straight that the little mouthful water he makes her gulp is just uh, water but is the very flow of living and life so uh, definitely this is also another important factor that when somebody uh, is uh, when somebody is uh, on the verge of death is dying you will find they they need water you have to or uh, drink them water very often uh, sometimes we believe in the concept in the cultural uh, tradition that if you uh, find if you drink water from your uh, younger generation so you will uh, you will have a um, successful contentful uh, uh, life some some sometimes we believe so here also we say that the lady says that the water you are drinking me is uh, more than water it, it is life because she is neglected everybody believes that she is a burden now to them she draws his attention to the slow ooze from our eyes so um, she is crying so it happens to most of uh, the people most of the old uh, older people those who exist in the world exist in our culture they are burden to the younger world they do not have any place in the young generation and the young generation always um, humiliate them they undermine them uh, and whenever somebody is unable to take his or her own care so they become a burden so when they are uh, in the verge of death they are uh, about to die everybody in the family they are supposed to be happy in, in the inherent um mind in her and heart in the inner part of their heart though on the surface they so that they are uh, very sad they are very much um, very much worried about uh, how this lady will recover but actually they want that the lady should die the the old person should die that so uh, so that they can have no such burdens they they have no old bodies and those, those will decay they, those will uh, destroy Uh, one day will be destroyed one day so this is very uh, pathetic scene uh, of pathetic uh, part of every human life so we we know okay so this is something uh, like that we can uh, 
find this mother serious is a mother at last we find the mother uh, died at last also okay uh, we find that the last few lines suggest impelling collapse of the mother the complexity of the uh, similes metaphors and uh, others other uh, figure figures of speech used so effectively that made this poem intensely authentic very authentic okay uh, we will find that nirmala defined poetry as the as that which ignites thought and creates unrest in mind the expressive devices go far beyond the usual figure of speech there is novelty in phrase such as as quickly as giving suck when uh, the kid in sleep turns around ears like this is the part of there is many such expressions uh, which uh, rivet the attention of the reader on the line leaving a lasting impression this, this is a very good you know, poem if you read the original poem you can better enjoy the text okay so this is um, uh, the poem and another poem is uh, about uh, sri radha odia poem by ramakanta ratha so you can go through the text only one section of the poem uh, is given in prescribed for the text so if you can go for the text and enjoy the text if you have it is also again the radha is the uh, is in the title actually radha is uh, radha in the character um, as a character in mahabharat you know that krishna and radha we do not find that radha here here the radha is somebody else okay so it's already time we have to start the next class mg 7 Uh, so thank you very much uh, we'll go through the text if you have uh, the yes, text sir. you can go through the text and try to understand the text better then only the critical analy- analysis can have meaning unless you understand the text so it is uh, very um, meaningless to go you know, means uh, analyze uh, uh, listen to an analysis or reading an analysis so in order to uh, start Uh, understanding analyzing a text first of all you should uh, read the text okay whether you understand the text completely or not that that does not matter first read it go through the vocabulary expressions words used by the poet then uh, reading twice or thrice go to the analysis part after analysis read again and again So then only you can understand the poem is very difficult to understand actually it's not that much easy that we say okay anyhow uh, thank you very much to all so we'll uh, discuss the next class 7 in the next class